harder for Olympic runners because, so for you guys, it's pretty much just the Olympics. I mean, yes, you do other running, but that's the end goal. And it's that one thing and it's only four years. Meanwhile, like other runners. Okay. So if you take an ultra runner, they get ready for a race. They don't do well in that ultra run. Well, I've got another one in two months. So you either have the Olympics, you don't make it. And then you have four years and possibly never again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's such a mind game too, because like we're putting that pressure on ourselves more than anybody, but also like, yeah, like the way that this is what pays our bills shoe companies sign athletes who have the potential to make a team um they're not really going to be investing in athletes who who aren't who don't have the potential to do that um so yes it's a lot of pressure but that's what makes it so special um and it's a beautiful journey regardless of whether you make it or not. Um, I, I've been telling a lot of people because people have been feeling sorry for me. <laughs> and um, I, I've just been telling people like getting there and laying it all on the line and failing greatly and being able to see my family in the stands and my coach and the people who have supported me, um, that's better than any medal could have ever given me. So there's a lot of good things to be taken out of it as From well. That. Yeah, whew, that was a brutal one. Um, sometimes as runners, I mean, I'm sure you guys have experienced something um, like this where something really bad just happens with your body and you have zero control. Mm -hmm. And the the lack of control is what is the hardest part of it because we're used to being like proactive and making sure that we can take care of stuff and get it all done. But that just brings you to your knees literally. And um, for me, my knee kind of blew out and uh, it just wouldn't track properly for half of a year. And um, finally it's, I started being able to run again a little bit, but it still wasn't a hundred percent. So I looked into a very, what is known to be a very common procedure, uh, PRP or PRP injections. Um, but I didn't have a lot of guidance at the time. And, um, I desperately went to someone at a small integrative practice in the mountains somewhere. Wow. And, he did it a very untraditional way. He used a dextro solution. He scraped along both of my oh. patella caps and I was out of running for a very long time. I couldn't even walk for about four months. And that was like the scariest time of my life because not only did I know I was losing my sponsorship with my former shoe company because of this, um, I didn't even know if I could ever run again. Um, with the way that that felt and so yeah I lost sponsorship and had to figure out my life with literally absolutely nothing on my resume except for I can run fast in circles um, and a lot of jobs won't take you very seriously. It was actually Endure uh, by um, Alex Hutchinson who was on the show a while back and he wrote the book Endure and in just like a small paragraph, and I don't even remember, it might've even been like a throwaway line or something. It was about the power of the like facial expressions and how you're reacting in the moment. And it was something like, if you smile more, your body doesn't understand that you're going through something awful. Mm -hmm. So you are kind of tricking yourself to think, into thinking, okay, this isn't as bad as it seems. So whenever I'm like really struggling through a run, <laughs> seriously, people probably think I'm crazy because people have given me looks especially like when I'm running through parks and stuff, like I go out of my way to really smile. I'm just like running and I'm like really legit. Not smiling. anybody either, like just by yourself. Yeah. And the good thing, the good thing about it is though, I'm typically wearing headphones. So it just looks like I'm listening to something that's like making me like really happy or smile. But Natasha, have you tried that? Just like next time you're in a run and feeling down, just like legitimately try to smile big. 
I have not tried that either, <laughs> but I've actually read that before that like smiling can trick your mind and yes. um i need to do that because lately i haven't been smiling a lot <laughs> yeah. and even this was a really unfortunate thing about um a lot of us athletes going into such a special experience like the olympic trials we make it a living hell for ourselves we were like so nervous we're there's so much pressure we just turn it into this like almost nightmare like and it's like you start noticing more the things that are going wrong than the things that are going right and I I was aware of that like going into the trials I was like I need to recognize and be aware that I'm here I made it and I got to make the best of this um I cried a lot the week leading up to the trial it was so emotional but yeah I I wish I would have just like smiled more you know and um I did I did a little bit but uh I just like using that as an actual practice is a different story so I definitely want to try that as well I'm gonna write that down <laughs> I statements and smiling yeah <laughs> You definitely experience the bandwagon effect. Like suddenly everybody cared about what I do. Mm. Whereas usually no one cares that much. Like everyone reached out. To, that was really overwhelming too. Like even a week before the race, people were reaching out to me that I haven't heard up from in like ages. And, you know, they jumped on the bandwagon. They were ready for me to make the team. And, um, that's just so typical of like the Olympics. It's like everyone is excited about it when it's here. And then when it's over, everyone goes back to their life and forgets that it's a thing, except for the people who are training for it. Um, and they're like, okay, well, I didn't make it. And so I have four years. <laughs> well, it's, this time it's not going to be four years, but it's like, here we go. Another four years that I'm just sacrificing, laying my life out for. Um, but yeah, it's funny how other people view the Olympics because everyone's all about it when it's time. But when it's, you know, an off year, no one cares. You know? I didn't make it. But this time two years ago, I was sitting in a cubicle working a full time job and not running at all. So I've come a long way to where I am now because you've seen I mean, like most runners, if they don't make it, they kind of just go right back in there training again but you literally saw that other side of the coin where you were sitting at a desk all day like oh god this is awful so do you kind of like use that as well it could have always been worse I could be there yeah definitely um that's why it's just the whole it's not so much like becoming an Olympian that is so special it's the pursuit of it it's the journey um, it's the present moment instead of this futuristic goal that you have. And the fact that I did have this roller coaster um, like experience where I kept climbing my way back <laughs> um, is really cool. And uh, yeah, I've reflected on that a lot. And I'm really proud of myself for that. And I do feel like even though I was seventh, that it was a victory and um you know unfortunately like if it were another day I maybe could have made the team but um it wasn't it it is what it is and I'm I'm willing and ready to accept that reality and just um take all the good parts from it and I'm definitely glad I'm not sitting at a cubicle cubicle <laughs> I felt like I was chained to a desk and I would just write down on a piece of paper every day, like the Olympics, I would write that down and just try to manifest it. And I came pretty close. Um, so it's good enough. <laughs> Love manifesting.